Dragonfolk, I have some bad news. You might not actually want to open those Dominari United Collector booster boxes. Dragonfolk, welcome on into the video. I have a special surprise for you. It's Diablo. He'll be joining us for today's video. While he cleans literally every part of his body. Anyway, how are you all doing? I hope you're all having a fantastic day as per usual. Remember, get to drink your water, eat something, and uh, remember to love yourself, all right? Because if you don't, I will. Anyway, so as the spoiler season ended, right, so quickly did the box opening videos start to commence. So, of course, everybody was wondering, what's it going to be like when you open these Dominar United Collector Booster Packs, right? A 3% chance at a Legends card? Everybody, everybody wants to be the person to open a Legends card on video. It's something most haven't been able to do. But uh, I've got some bad news. Uh, and it, it's really saddening to see that this whole ploy can be just for one 3% chance at a card. And everything else just gets ignored. So today we're going to talk about what comes in a Dominaria United Collector Pack. And... I know that most of you have watched the videos, and for those of you who don't know, it just looks like they're pulling cards, right? You, you, not many people are looking at the, the the pull rate of certain cards, of the certain variants, and how many there are, and whether or not there's actual value to the cards. Because granted, let me remind you, as of the posting of this video, everything is on pre-sale pricing. That is not an accurate way to tell what a card's price is going to be. Don't ever, ever, ever make a video or make any kind of content or a Reddit post or anything saying, oh my God, oh, uh, Shieldred's going for $75 in her textured foil version. That's crazy. Uh, like, she's gonna right now, but when it comes out and everybody gets their hands on it, I guarantee you every one of these pre-sale prices are going to be at least half, if not less. So, regardless of pre-sale pricing, we have exactly what is, the, you know, the, the big to do, right? We have the set of Dominari United, right? The whole reason people actually open this product should be because you want cards from Dominari United, right? Obviously, LGS is a side because LGSs want to open this product to have singles in their store. That's a valid thing. But, as I've said before, I believe that keeping these collector booster packs and boxes sealed is going to be the better choice, strictly because you won't lose any value on it. It will just continue to grow in value because of the possible chance of a Legends card being in there. But more specifically, I wanted to talk about the contents of the pack. So if you look over a box opening of Dominar United Collector's booster box, right? You will see what I'm talking about once I kind of bring it to light if you're not already familiar with it. So there is a way that these cards are put into the packs, right? Like they're layered in there specifically. Sometimes if it's a Japanese pack compared to like a U.S. pack or a Belgian pack or something, um, the order may be different. Usually the Japanese packs are like backwards, right? All of the uh, rare cards are in the front and all the not rare cards are in the back. Uh, but those are usually only for draft packs. Normally, you don't see that anywhere else. So, for instance here with the Collector Booster Packs, we start off every single pack with four commons and two uncommons, right? So let me just paint that picture for you. Six cards in foil that you probably aren't going to care about, right? Because let's just be honest, right? I don't think people open collector booster packs for the commons and uncommons. Let me know if I'm wrong, but that seems to be the case. Every opening you see, those first six cards thrown to the wayside. 
then the next card to come up onto the list is going to be your foil full art basic land in the stained glass treatment right that card is obviously going to go for a lot they're not a lot they're going to go for just about as much as the ukiyo lands from uh kamigawa neon dynasty so they're very pretty uh you know i would love to get a a, a lot of them for my decks but they're probably going to cost about a dollar fifty two dollars a piece i would imagine if not maybe less hopefully less who's to say but after that we get into the spice right like the big spice of the pack right everything else after that after these first seven cards is all good stuff right eight cards of pure bliss well not really you have to think of that the last card is actually a double-sided token so seven cards are going to be spicy the next card that you're going to see after that land is actually going to be a textured foil card one of the legendary creatures that are in the stained glass treatment get a they they all get textured foil versions of themselves too uh, much like how the gilded foil cards were in new capenna these are just the stained glass showcase cards but instead of them being traditional foil they are in textured foil you are guaranteed one of these cards in every pack so this is a guarantee you're not ever going to get, oh, you know, you might get one. It might be a chase. This is guaranteed to get one per pack, which means that if you open a whole box of Dominar United Collectors, you'll get 12 textured foils. With this guarantee, a lot of these textured foils are going to probably significantly drop in price. I'm sure of it, because with so many people opening Legends and so many people wanting to get that legends card that in that common slot which i also should have mentioned one of those four first commons could have been replaced with a legends card so that's where the legends card is going to be those cards from 1994 in the common slot but we're going to just like cut those out of the equation right now let's say you don't get anything from legends which is pretty much true one out or two out of three boxes in a case almost roughly so just about we're like 30 31 packs right 31 packs you're pretty much never going to get a legends card statistically so you have now a textured foil card which is guaranteed and it's one of the i think like 46 or something uh cre legendary creatures that are in dominar united so you're going to see a lot of doubling in that slot you're going to see a lot of obviously it's it's easier to get a rare or an uncommon than it is a mythic, but there's only a few mythics. And eventually, the more you open, the more you're going to have these things available. So one per pack is at least going to drop the price of a good portion of these, if not all of them. So the next two slots are actually going to be a foil etched or non-foil alternate border rare or mythic which means that these cards can either be stained glass, Phyrexian cards, borderless cards, or legends retold cards. So let me put that in perspective because from my previous video up here, I have told you all that you can get foil etched and non foil versions of the box topper cards, the legends retold in the collector booster boxes. Now I imagine this was going to be pretty hard to find a foil etched version of a card. But let me tell you, I have seen so many openings of these collector booster boxes and these collector booster packs, and almost every one of them contain at least two of these Legends retold cards. Because you have two slots next after that textured foil that could be Legends retold. Then you also have the next one, which is a foil etched or non foil legends retold uncommon so you're guaranteed a foil etched or non-foil legends retold card in your pack and there will always be a max of two foil etched you know uh legends retold cards in every collector booster pack which means that you have two 
to three slots in this 15 card pack with only seven cards left to be spicy. Three of them are, from what I can tell, usually the commander box toppers in just a different variant. And there's only 20 of them. The amount of duplication I'm seeing from pack to pack to pack is mind blowing. These box toppers are now ruined as far as any value would go. Nothing matters. If you're able to get a foil etched version of these cards easier than you are to get a one foil box topper version of it, you're going to go with the foil etch stuff. It's just that is going to be the, the move that most people are going to do. So <laughs> it blows my mind that they would make three of these slots Legends Retold stuff. Why, why would you do that? I don't think you should have put the Legends Retold stuff in the actual packs. Much like another thing that I'm going to bring up. You guys remember in that video that I just posted up there? Uh, I had said that the Jumpstart uh, exclusives for the Dominaria United Jumpstart were not released yet. Well, we did find out what they were, right? And these five cards are supposed to be exclusive to the Jumpstart packs, right? Exclusive. You're guaranteed to get one in them, but they're exclusive to that. Now, when you hear the word exclusive... What does that mean to you? Does that mean that you can only find it in jumpstart packs? Because that's what it means to me. That's what I hear when I hear that. So do you want to tell me why? The extended art slot, a non-foil extended art rare or mythic slot, has a chance to get you a jumpstart card. One of the cards from Jumpstart, one of the five cards that are exclusive to Jumpstart, you can get in there. Not to mention, you can get them in the set booster packs too, not, not extended art. So how are they exclusive to Jumpstart? This is just my rant. I'm already upset about it. I'm going to make a different video on it, except I don't really have to. I can just take whatever I have here. But that's what I'm talking about. Another one of these slots could be a Jumpstart, a main set, or a commander card that is extended art not many of the extended art cards are actually like good and more specifically they seem to normally be those cards from the commander sets from the commander uh, pre-cons or from the jumpstart stuff i haven't seen anything super crazy that was in extended art that was like oh i needed that in that form silverback elder maybe is probably like the one but other than that I haven't seen much else and not much else is getting it. It just is blowing my mind. So now let's just go back, right? Take the Wayback Machine. Forget that I went on that giant rant about Jumpstart and it's bull crap. So now you had seven cards that were supposed to be spicy. An average of two to three of them are cards that aren't going to matter anymore and are going to be quite literally worthless because there's going to be so much duplication. So let's say three, right? That means you now have four cards. Then we take away that extended art that could be a jumpstart, which seems to be usually a jumpstart or at least some other extended art that is not like worth the the actual like value, I guess. I don't know. It's, it's hard to tell the value of what's going to have what, but for the most part, they don't seem to be super crazy. Not to mention they're non-foil extended arts. Not many people want those. That gives you three slots left right? Three slots in the back. You have a traditional foil rare or mythic, and then you have a traditional foil alternate border rare or mythic for that. So now you have the the alternate border of stained glass, extended art, Phyrexian, or borderless, right? That's like the back card. And then after that, the only thing that's left is a traditional foil stained glass legendary creature that's an uncommon so you get an uncommon in traditional foil stained glass, so not the textured foil, and three box up uh, uh, and a choice of maybe three box toppers, roughly, a possible jumpstart extended art card, six uh six 
uncommons and commons and with like the the odds that none of them are legends cards right then you have the land and the token you have three i'm not even gonna count the uncommon two slots two slots in here in which you are going to get something that is actually going to be worth your time and that is quite literally you have a possible chance that one of these alternate borders in this two slot is not a legends retold card but it seems to be that you're always going to get a foil etched legends retold card and a and a non-foil legends retold uncommon but you seem to you seem to be getting at least two per pack this is a big i don't know it just doesn't make any sense to me i i don't think there's any genuine value in the product and that's my that's my take on it i don't think there's any genuine value in the product itself with all of the openings i've seen and all of the legends retold cards and all of the stained glass cards and the addition of a guaranteed texture foil in every pack and a stained glass land in every pack the commons and uncommons won't matter because one in every like 31 packs are going to contain nothing but bulk right and then let's say you get lucky right and you're able to pull a borderless liliana of the veil in foil borderless foil liliana of the veil right that's probably one of the bigger hits then you also have the foil phyrexian art of shieldred or even a johnny right those three cards are probably the most chase in this set and you can get all of those cards in draft booster boxes. You can get all of them in draft booster boxes. Every single one. So why would you mass open this box unless you were looking for a Legends card? And let me tell you, you know how I said that all those prices of all those cards and all those fancy variants are going to go down in price? Well, they're going to go down in price because everybody's going to want to open it for the Legends card. The card that takes over a slot in the common space. That is going to be the card that people are going to go after. And you know what? What are they going to do with all the other cards that they have? Keep them? Most players will. But mo granted, a lot of players won't. They'll probably take their bulk to their LGS and they'll go, hey, you can sell this off to somebody, right? You can do that. There are going to be so many people who are not going to be excited opening a collector booster box. And that's what upsets me. I believe that as a collector, when I buy something that is based specifically for me, that I should be looking at something that is truly collectible in these packs. And the only thing that's available in one out of every like 32 packs is one Legends card that may or may not be a rare. And the odds of it being a rare is what? Like one in like 5,000 or something? Like, there's no way that I would ever spend the money to chase a tabernacle doing something like this. Because if it if it meant that I was going to get a bunch of really good cards out of it, and I'd be able to use those to build a cube or to 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 get many all these other decks together and really kind of you know ease things through, then it'd be fine. But I am not excited looking at these openings these openings do not excite me the more i think the thing that obviously is very upsetting to me is the guaranteed texture foil which if you want any of these things in texture foil just wait 30 days after the release i guarantee you'll be able to get them for you know, like a third of the cost of what they are right now and secondly all of these legends retold why why are they doing this this thing again right Ikoria was at least kind of okay in regards where you got a box topper and it was really hard for you to find a Godzilla card in the collector booster packs, right? Or at least it was hard for you to find like a, 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 tra a traditional foil version of one. But then they came out with stuff for Crimson Vow and Crimson Vow, it was like, like, oh gosh, you can't, you, you can't find it. Like any of these, any of these borderless cards that are based on Dracula are now just in any of these packs that you can find and now they're doing it again they're doing it again 
you can just find these Legends Retold card again and again, and they're not even that great. <laughs> like, they're not that great. They, they make a box topper seem like it's a chase. But really what a box topper is, is it's something for the people who are not buying collector boxes, which is fine. That's what a box topper should be. Put it in set boxes. Put it in draft boxes. Put one in the jumpstart box, which it should do. But instead, you are going and you're saying, oh, hey, these box topper cards are now going to be available in two to three slots in your collector pack that you're paying three to four times the price of a normal draft pack in order for you to open. And uh, guess what? It's the same card, just in a different variant. And, and what a kick in the nuts it's got to be to get one in non-foil, right? What? Like, wh like, where is that a premium that you're getting a non-foil card for more money? I don't know. It has... It, it's not clicking well with me, but let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I am, I, I'm, I'm more infuriated that this has taken this path, but what this truly has done for me is this has made me go. Now I don't ever have to worry about opening a collector booster box. They made the contents so sad to open that I know now I can just buy them sealed and never have to open them. And I'll wait for them to go up in value as the time goes on because these are going to be cracked to no end. And when I want to pick up singles, I can pick up singles. But until then, everything I'm getting is keeping sealed. I may open a draft box. I'm not sure. If any of you guys have a box that you want to open, you just go ahead and let me know. Uh, if you, you know, will, will you send me an email. If you're a patron of mine, you can go ahead and send me a message over Patreon. If you're interested in joining said Patreon, there is a link in the description down below. A lot of pretty good tiers for everybody to join. And of course, you know, you can support in that way. But kind of the best way to do it is just to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave that comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about this. And, uh, you know, how, how do you feel about these Legends Retold cards practically being super duplicates in this collector box? And, of course, as always, thank you so much for watching. I do really appreciate your support. And remember, to make it a great day or not, the choice is up to you. I'll see you all real soon. Nerd out.